I would say if the authorities didn't want us involved in the public square, they ought not to have crucified Jesus in the public square. Use humanistic principles. Well, I would say the Dan, same idea. Yeah, I would say same that. End. I would say, what's the problem with stardust bumping into stardust? In the in the cosmic picture, no, there's no problem. In the okay. cosmic picture, it won't matter. No, Mr. President, you are not protecting reproductive freedom. You are authorizing the destruction of freedom for one million little human beings every year. I'm sorry, my friends, but I am tired of seeing Jesus presented as a weak beggar. He is a powerful Savior, and the Gospel is not a suggestion, it is a command. Reverend Mola, don't you sympathize with that? I sympathize with every single human heart wishing to know the one true and living God, but I believe there's only one way that that can happen through Jesus Christ, and the Gospel is about repenting of sin, not celebrating it. of an amazing adventure. We will explore the spiritual abyss. You have not experienced this before. You're gonna love it. All right, hey, was that an awesome throwback or what? Man, Zach's I happy. got chills, bro. Did you? Yes. Zach reminded us of our old Apologia Radio intro music. I'm so glad you reminded us. Dude. It's so good to hear that again. It's been so long. So good. It's so good. I remember going to bed with the headphones in my ears, just letting that blare. Yeah. That's what I went to sleep to. This wow. is what I, <laughs> This is what I go to sleep to. <laughs> <laughs> this word. Lo-fi, <laughs> hip-hop beats, copyright free. See, in order for us to actually have the background beats going, we have to have copyright free music or YouTube will... <laughs> Kill it. Mm. This so is we found silky, bro. Yeah. This is silky. Mm. Silky like those <laughs> pajamas you're wearing while listening to this. <laughs> oh, oh, I lost my wedding ring. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Whoa. Is that, not is that what happens when this music comes I'm, li- <laughs> I'm losing weight. Oh, oh man. Wow. You did that in a message once and it was hilarious. Well, my ring flew off. Remember in Iowa? Yeah. Yeah. He was like, and it went like, boom, like flying. Did you know what audience. happened? I, I think so. Yeah, he was like, oops. Whoops. Someone, yeah. someone gathered that my belongings for me. Somebody in the eyeball. Hit someone in the face. Well, anyways, company. welcome back to another episode of Apologia Radio. This program is brought mm. to you by the creators at Apologia Studios. Mm. You can get more at apologiastudios.com. That's A P O L O G I A studios.com. <laughs> Sorry, I'm super pumped. It's been a long week. It's been a long week of pastoral responsibilities. <laughs> Haven't got a lot of sleep this week and uh, super exhausted, so it may be a bit punchy today, just so you know. So with that, I am Pastor Jeff. They do call me the ninja, and that is Luke the Bear right there. What up? And that is Zach Attack. What's up, everybody? Zachary Conover, Director of Communications at EndAbortionNow.com, and I know everything about him. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of. Well, uh, it's just a throwback to a nice old 80s yeah. movie called Best of the Best. One of the greatest. One of the great 80s of all time. movie. One of the great movies of all time. I mean, in terms of martial arts. I've never arts seen it, so. You need to see it. It's best sorry. of the Best. It's great. The man. other ones. That's as childhood right possible. There. But Best of the Best, part one. Excellent, worthy cinema for yeah. a Friday night. And if you're married. <laughs> That'll set the mood. <laughs> Martial arts movie. <laughs> yeah, that'll really... Okay, so a um, lot to talk about today in Apologia Radio. Um, let's see here. So we're going to start off talking about an important um, subject right now our brothers and sisters in Michigan are dealing with right now who are out spreading the gospel and speaking directly into the issue of abortion at their local abortion mills. Yes. They've saved lots of lives. Lots. Praise mm-hmm. God. And uh, they are connected with endabortionnow.com. They've gotten all the stuff, free training, free resources, all that stuff. You can also get connected with End Abortion Now at endabortionnow.com. Get all the free training, all the free resources. It is a resource for local churches across the country to save lives, to bring the distinctly Christian worldview into, the, into conflict with the abortion 
Um, that is the purpose of End Abortion Now. It is a gospel-centered movement to end abortion. Um, and so that's where you guys can go. So they've gotten connected. Um, actually, we need to do this before I actually go into this. As you guys are preparing, share the content, guys. Let everyone know. Important conversation. We're going to talk about what's happening in Michigan right now. We're going to talk about the state of American theology with a very upsetting um, uh, uh, questionnaire, questionnaire, yeah, survey, uh, annual survey that, that was like uh, asked ab- uh, about amongst uh, American evangelicals. It is disturbing. Uh, no other way to put that. And uh, we're going to play some clips from a show that was trying to respond to us um, regarding some of the uh, law of God, the commandments contained in ordinances, holiness code. Uh, these guys believe that we should be circumcising our babies on the eighth day as Christians um, and among a number of other things. So just play some clips from that, not spend a lot of time on that today. Uh, just because we have uh, some bigger fish to fry right now. So I uh, wanted to point everybody who is living in Australia right now and New Zealand. We are coming. We're coming to Australia Today. and New Zealand. I promise or a threat. That is <laughs> both, <laughs> actually both. Uh, so the kingdom of darkness. we are coming to um, New Zealand and Australia. We're going to come, come to Brisbane first, then to Sydney. Then we're coming to Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, in Christchurch, we're going to be at Bishop Dale Reformed church on november the 15th 6 30 p.m till 9 30 p.m uh we are also going to be in again brisbane and sydney and for some reason i do not have that on this flyer right here i will get that to you at some point by the end of the show today or maybe these guys can pull it up here um we are going to be i believe it's the 10th am i correct about that the 10th is in brisbane here, I'll pull it up right okay, now. Okay, well, yeah, we'll pull it up. They're pulling it up. I'll let you guys know what we're doing. End Abortion Now is coming to Australia, and I think it's a perfect time. Uh, Queensland just fully yep. legalized abortion. Right. And so Zach and I were talking yesterday as mm-hmm. we were going to our local magistrates to speak prophetically to them. Uh, the providence of God right now, and right as yeah. abortion is fully curious. legalized in Queensland, we already had plans to come in to speak to the church in Australia. So, yeah, no, I just, the timing is a little bit eerie. And um, I think it's very fitting for the church in Australia right now to receive encouragement, to receive um, instruction and just having, you know, this sin obviously at a national level perpetuated in our country for over four decades. Um, We have a lot of failures as a nation here in America. So, Anytime that we are invited now um, into another country to really spread this gospel-centered message of end abortion now and train local churches to do the kind of work that we're doing, it comes with a lot of humility. Uh, We're not coming uh, to instruct someone from a place of superiority or that we've, you know, found, um, you know, we're not superior. We're not coming in with that kind of attitude. We're really coming in from a place of humility and saying, brothers and sisters, this is so serious in God's eyes, and so we must act and do something in order to drive it out before God drives us out mm. of our lands. Yeah, we and, and I like uh, we'll end we'll end on that note. Um, when we come into a place like Australia, New Zealand, and we say, "Please listen to us, church." Um, we're coming with a knowledge of 40 years of failures in terms of the Christian church trying to adopt secular principles or secular methodologies, um, abandoning Christian commitments, uh, trying to pretend neutrality. And uh, we want to encourage you not to start your fight in the way that we did. We right. have failed right. as a church. We're coming out of that failure as a church in terms of reorienting ourselves to the gospel message. Only and by God's grace. That's only by God's grace. So uh, we praise God, it, God's graciousness toward Australia and New Zealand that he's, he's sending believers to communicate that this needs to be about Christ, the word of God, the gospel, the call to repentance and faith. Um, I, I am just humbled that God has allowed us to have our eyes open to that truth right. in terms of fighting this fight in a consistently Christian way. And um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to come to Australia. But but we find the dates? Well, yeah, I have what, what information. Okay. Were you- I want to find out for those of you guys who are right now in Australia and uh, New Zealand, I want you guys to know the dates, the times, and locations. So in Brisbane is... Uh, sub- uh, Saturday the 10th at City, Ta- City Tabernacle Baptist Church. That's Saturday, November. November the 10th. Yes. So coming up very, very soon. Saturday, November the 10th at City Tabernacle Baptist Church. Baptist Church. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's one of our longer ones. And then uh, we're going to be in Sydney. Oh, we, we made it long for Zach. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> then we're going to be in Sydney uh, so on that next Monday. Monday the 12th at Lagos Christian Church, uh, 6.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Okay, and then we're going to be in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thursday the 15th, uh, that's what you said, at Bishop Dale Reformed Church. Yes. Six. Oh, that's not right. It says 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. I believe that's supposed to be 6.30 6.30 p.m., yes. <laughs> it's Unless, not all day. <laughs> I mean, well, Zach, no. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. I believe it's 6.30 p.m. So so if you want to be in attendance, uh, please get connected at endabortionnow.com slash Australia. 2018. To the Australia 2018. Yep. Uh, endabortionnow.com. Go. You got to register, get tickets, and all that good stuff. Please spread the word and please pray for us that we wouldn't have any problems getting into Australia and New Zealand. Yep. And I, all no right. I noticed that there's only males speaking at this conference. <laughs> yeah, we saw, uh, of course, pro-choicers oh. and pro board saying that. Look at all the guys speaking. Uh, yeah, all the men speaking up for the little ladies who are being killed. Exactly. Um, yeah, doing so, what men are supposed to. Zach, please bring us into the conversation. Let's have our guests come on. Yeah, so um, One Life Church in Michigan and their ministry to save children one life for life were equipped uh, at End Abortion Now when we had the conference here, and since then they have been extremely active and faithful in their ministry in Flint at their local abortion mill and saving children and bringing the gospel to that place. But um, we have here on the radio show with us one of the um, men that's actually out there from uh, open to close every day. Wow. Um, and they're seeing the Lord has blessed them with a ton of fruit out there. Um, his name is Justin Phillips, and then he's joining us with his pastor, also Eric Stewart. And I've seen Eric out there, too. I've seen the video footage of, of him you know, out there ministering at the clinic also, having that support, too. So um, recently... Um, maybe they can bring us into a little bit more of the details, but there was something issued against Justin um, as an infraction for being there constantly in the presence, confronting, you know, the people going in, the the abortionist calling out to them, essentially, um, preaching the gospel, doing all that. So we have them here with us. Guys, are you with us still? Yeah. Yeah. yeah what's up, guys? All right. Yeah, Thanks so much for coming on, on, guys. Welcome yeah, to the show. Us. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. So bring us into um, what's going on, Justin, in terms of maybe talk just a little bit about how the ministry has been going. I know, I think you guys have seen, is it, are we in the 60s now in terms of children saved? No, it's 77. Yes! 77. Praise God. 77 Praise God. children saved. You guys Praise hear Lord. that? Are you listening right now? I know you guys are in the live stream. Did you just hear that? 77 human beings alive today because of what God is doing through this ministry. Ministry, Praise God for awesome. what God's doing in Michigan. Absolutely amazing. So something happened recently, Justin. Do you want to bring us into um, just you know what transpired, what you guys are, are doing right now to combat it? Can you take us into that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So, so we've been there. So the conference, End Abortion Now conference, was last May. And uh, we got back on uh, Saturday, and then uh, that Monday we lo we landed at the mill basically, and we've wow. been there ever since. Um, every and, hour they've been open. Yeah, yep, yeah. Every hour they've been open since then, and um, so uh, so I guess like 15, 16 months or something like that. And uh, from the beginning, uh, the so it's a strip mall. So picture a strip mall, and then in the corner of the strip mall, there's a abortion mill. And there's two dollar stores and a Chase Bank, and so there's a lot of people coming and going. And but since the, from the beginning, uh, the manager of the abortion mill had had um, a letter from the landlord saying basically we can't be on his property at all. Mm -hmm. So was, from the beginning, we've been at, at on the grass, like this little grass um, between the the road and the parking lot. Well, recently, about uh, maybe a month ago, month and a half ago, the whole plaza sold. So now that letter is null and void, right? So so now I can go to the dollar store and I can I can walk out into the parking lot a little bit, mm -hmm. or I can if a mom says um, I can go hand her a bag, I walk over to her and give her a bag and talk to her and share the gospel with her. And um, mm -hmm. uh, and Peggy, the manager, just, just does not like this at all. <laughs> and so right. so the other the other week I I was going to the dollar store after they closed. And uh, and she came over and, and took a picture of my license plate, my car and stuff. And then she walked back to her car and then she turned around and started recording and saying, go away from me. You're scaring me and all these all these things. And I was like, hey, I'm just going to I'm just going to the dollar store. And so I just went to the dollar store. But that was her. So then she filed a restraint or a, a stalking um, wow. PPO it's called. Yeah. Uh, 
So that's where we're at. So I can't be at, I haven't been in the mill since um oh, this week. Oh yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, you you have been going elsewhere, that, right? Just had his GoPro on that whole time. Oh, so wow. you can actually see her approach him, record the video, and then once she flips her video camera on her, her acting job that she tries to pull off. So So I <laughs> imagine you ha- you probably have a court date set to argue this before the, the local judge, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, October 29th is the the, the hearing to, okay. get it, to have it terminated. Yes. Okay. So we, wow. we, we have until October 29th. So you can have your day in court to demonstrate. So I imagine you're going to be bringing that um, uh, video evidence in. Yes. Yeah. And then we have a lot of video of her coming over and yelling and cussing and screaming at us. And, Good. and uh, so, so, and we've never threatened or I've never even seen her outside of the abortion clinic. That's the only place I see her. And I'm, I'm at the abortion clinic, not because she's there, but because they're killing babies in there. You know, right. It doesn't matter if she's there or not. You know. Of course. Oh, boys, we'll be wow. praying for you. And, man, do we praise God for your ministry. I, can I just point something out to everyone that I think is just uh, it, it's encouraging to me? EndAbortionNow.com uh, is a uh, ministry of apology, a church. So mm-hmm. our church body, this is our ministry to equip other churches uh, and to go out and to try to end abortion ourselves, of course. But you know what I love? is that here we have this team of believers in Michigan who have their own right. ministry. Yep. We're, not, we're not setting up franchises. Right. Right. Uh, this is their effort before God with their community of believers. It's their labor. It's their work. Of course, and Abortion Now has, has loved and equipped and, yep. and, and encouraged them, but this is their ministry. So I, I would like to just talk about that for a minute, guys. Um, can you just introduce everybody to how this became a reality for you guys uh, how how did you s- start doing this and can you just get us up to speed with that because 77 children alive today because of this ministry people need to hear about this story and and really how you were shaped and how they could do it themselves yeah i think i'll start and then mm-hmm. justin you can carry it on from the conference so like i've, I've been involved with um pregnancy centers and things like that for years quote-unquote pro, pro-life movement and throughout that time i just began to realize like man we we've, we've invested a ton of money and we have really sweet people there and a lot of them really have a heart for uh trying to save children but at the end of the day there's very few abortion minded women coming there mm-hmm. and so i started getting really burdened with that i was like man something we something more has to be done there has to be something more we can do to really reach people rather than just waiting for them to come to us cuz they're not coming and uh, I just began like really searching and uh, seeking like what more could we do, and that's what I actually came across. Um, uh, Apology Radio I came across your podcast, some of your videos, and started seeing what you guys were doing outside of the abortion clinic. And to be honest, when I first saw it, I was like, "Man, that that's crazy! I'll never do anything like that." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's really intense. You know, that's crazy. But that's what I thought too. <laughs> yeah, 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 so we're, we're in the same boat. Um, but as time went on, I just became it came to a point where i was like man that is right like if we were back in the slave trade again would we not want christians to go to the point of injustice say no don't do this right stop right and uh man that that just hit me so i started casting a vision at our church and we're a church plant like we're four years from our start date like when we launched this ministry we were less than 100 people at that time we've grown a little since then but um so i started casting this vision to our church that like we not only need to own this, but we need to own this in every way. And I casted a vision to like support people financially to do this so they could leave work and make this their exclusive ministry uh, uh, from the support of us. So uh, I think that year it was somewhere around 30% of our budget went strictly to go out on to save save babies, which was pretty cool. Yes. And so a big part of that strategy, we had two guys, one of them was Justin and then we sent them out to end abortion now conference and maybe Justin, you could pick it up from there. Yeah. So then when we, when we got back, um, uh, we just thought that, well, we'll be at, we'll be at the mill and we, we were there every hour and, and God showed up, showed us, um, in much encouragement that that's what he wanted us to do. And, and cause we fear we want to end this now, right. End the abortion now. So how, what's the only way we can, we know how right now to, to raise the level to, um, to bring the intensity and the focus to this issue that's going on, and, and we and we should be there when they're open. And we've had a lot of encouragement, and um, 
uh, in the beginning, we had moms, number of them come over crying and said, where were you two months ago? I was here and I had an abortion and no one was out here. Or, um, or we had one mom that she drove an hour and a half or rode a bus for an hour and a half to back to the mill. And she went in to get a, she just wanted a picture of the ultrasound of her baby, but they wouldn't give it to her. And she came over crying to us. Like, I wish you were here four months ago in this, this mill, this mill, they, we've been there until midnight they've been killing babies till midnight wow. there. oh my goodness and, and and they do it all in these weird hour you know off hours and stuff like that so when we feel that place is open the christians we need to be out outside of there to offer help and to proclaim the gospel and um and so and god's blessed that and really um granted us the strength and encouragement uh, and endurance in that but um and that's what we want to spread across um to, to every abortion mill in this country that we have christians outside of their you know the whole time they're open and then yes. that will raise the national attention yeah and then we'll mm-hmm. have to make a decision as a country and these these christians they're out there every you can't go to the abortion clinic anywhere in the country without christians being there you know and and so and then that will raise aware attention yeah. to it i think oh man praise <clears throat> god yep. so um 77 children saved can you just tell us on a very personal level what was it like when you got to hold one of these children that were saved from death through this ministry, because I, I mean, you guys know it is taxing hard. This is like the hardest yeah. ministry you'll ever do. It is awful. It is um, sometimes scary. Uh, it is uh, taxing on yeah. you and your family and your church. Um, it's not a pleasant ministry. It's not like a homeless ministry where you, you give somebody a jacket or a pair of socks and you know toothbrush, toothpaste, and some food, where they give you a big hug afterwards and tell you thank you. This is like hostility virtually the entire time, yeah, with from Christians as well. With little moments interspersed yeah. of you know these encouraging moments of Christians you know coming by and stopping to bless you or somebody turning away. But I mean overall, it's it's a lot of very intense persecution and just hatred mm. coming your way. So what, can you just give us a real intimate look at what was it like when you started to experience God showing up and just blessing you by giving you fruit of here's this woman who's telling you thank you or this baby in your arms. Can you share that with everybody? Yeah, so um, yeah, it's really hard to describe, but our, our first, the first um, save that that we had in, we were in contact with her and um, had her baby. They, they had twins, and so we were able to go to the hospital and and hold twins. And um, and when you're holding that baby, and I just kept thinking, wow, this baby would be in the dumpster, you know, because they would just just discarded this baby. But now I'm holding this this mm-hmm. child in my hands, and it's all because of God's grace to opening my eyes to this, to repenting from my apathy and complacency, and being there. And He's blessed me with this like opportunity and. And it, if we want to see God move the way that uh, that we read about in the Bible, it's at the front, it's at the gates of hell, it's in these places, and where 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 we are persecuted and reviled, and and um and all things evil said against us. But they, the Bible it says rejoice, you know, because this is that that's just a tiny microcosm, a little glimpse of what Christ went through for us, mm-hmm. and so and so we get to rejoice in that. And it's like it's in 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 those moments when you have holding a baby, you think. Um, Wow, I mean, it's worth all. I mean, it's it just makes it all worth it, you know. And yeah. Isn't it isn't it crazy, guys? It's One amazing. of the things that um, we had said because we thought this was all we thought this was crazy too. Um, yeah. Before we started doing it, <laughs> and <laughs> so we didn't know what we were doing except we knew the gospel. Mm-hmm. We knew we wanted to help these women, and so we, that was it. Our message was: don't murder your babies. Uh, Jesus will save you and forgive you if you turn from your sin to trust in Him, and will help you. That I means that's it. That th- those three things going out saying that. And, um, and we had said initially as a church, like if we do this our whole lives and we save one child from death, right. then it's a life well spent. And, mm-hmm. and lo and behold, like we just start seeing God save dozens of mm-hmm. babies through our church and the ministry, the ministry that we're doing. And now through End Abortion Now and churches like you guys now connected and doing exactly the same ministry, there are thousands of of children alive today because of Christians out doing this work. And yeah. it's just, it's just yeah. so amazing to me that like it, one life is worth it. It's worth it for one life, but God yeah. is just giving us so much fruit where we're holding twins in our mm. arms. I got twins running around my church sometimes that were saved from death. Um, I, it's just, isn't it incredible? It's just humbling. It mm. is. Yeah, it really is. So, um, I want to get everybody praying about yes. your court date, yeah, October 29th. Sure. Uh, 
this is such, uh, let me just say, this is not necessarily like high language here, but this is weak sauce. What a weak attempt yeah. to try to stop <laughs> oh, the guys. Ministry, ministry of the gospel. Guys, we read it and it was, it was bad. Like the, <laughs> the different things that they had described. I mean, it's, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, she it's said weak. in there um, that I tell her that she needs to be repent and be redeemed and all this. <laughs> oh, what like, what yeah. harassment? Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Wow. Uh, well, yeah. let me just say I trust God that this is just going to get squashed, and um, I, I I I believe God is all over your ministry, and this is not going to thwart God's purposes there at that mill. I trust God to save so many more children, and for God to be to use you as instrumental in, in ending abortion in your particular state. Um, so we're prayer, yeah. prayerful about that. Let me just ask you this. Can you let people know how they can get connected to you and your ministry in particular and how they can support you? Yeah, so our, our website is just one life for life, all spelled out, one life for life dot org. And then um and then um our Facebook page, you can go on there and um and see a lot of videos. <clears throat> That's just at one life for life three sixty five. Excellent. Right on. Excellent. All right, yeah. gentlemen. So hopefully we can have you guys back on in a couple of weeks and get an update as to what's yes, going yeah, on. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, sounds great. Okay, we think about you guys all the time. We pray about you all the time. We are so grateful to God for all that he's doing and raising you guys up and you guys being a light for him. Likewise. Appreciate yeah. you guys. Yeah, Thank you, brothers. You Same here, so much. All Thank right, you. bless you, brothers. God bless. All right, bless. guys. Continue to pray for our brothers there in Michigan. That is so awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I, I have been so encouraged by the um regular regular posts yeah they don't usually show those with public though right there's there's some stuff that they have private they do I see but they have their own page also okay. for the ministry okay. one life okay. for life and so yeah it, yeah i see if you follow their ministry online they they keep everyone updated okay on you share going. somebody with them right isn't that how we get a lot of the yeah and they've page. started to actually create their own content now um, okay. videos, oh, right okay. media. Good. Uh, remember they had that, um, the, the video that they did that showed the place next door to the abortion mill that they had gotten, they'd purchased and they're going to turn it into a, a place right. to lead women right. from there. And it's literally right next to the place. Right next to it. So, yeah. So exciting. So please be in prayer for the team in Michigan. Uh, October 29th is the day where he has to, they have to go to court to, to put this thing down. Um, it, it's just weak sauce. I mean, it's just one of these silly attempts to try to stop the work of the gospel out there. It will not end the work of the gospel out there right? by any means. Uh, so there's that. Hey, guys, pray, pray, pray. I know that what can often happen with a, with a ministry like this is that we can start to feel, we can start to get sort of get in a lull and just sort of start putting cruise control on you know, because you're just, you're doing your daily work, you're going out preaching the gospel, you're saving children, you mm -hmm. can lose some of the passion and fire because it just sort of becomes the mundane. Yeah. I want to encourage you to constantly reassess your heart and the situation and constantly put your mind back, if you're in this ministry, on the task at hand, the need for justice. Um, we we are um, trying ourselves as a church to, to constantly keep ourselves moving and pushing forward, there's going to be some interesting, thing hap interesting things happening here in Arizona in the next month. Um, we just had Pastor Luke, I'm sorry, uh, Zach, uh, speak to the magistrates here at the Phoenix City Council formal meeting yesterday. Yep. I'm going to actually play some of that audio for you guys right now. Right on. Before you guys scurry off, we have two cards. Mm. People want to speak. So, uh, Reverend Zachary Morgan. This is... Uh, Pastor Zach speaking to the Where's Phoenix that? City Council. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Reverend Zach Morgan, and I'm with Apologia Church, and I just am honored to be here standing before you today. I'm a servant of King Jesus Christ, a husband of my lovely wife, father of six, and a very concerned citizen before you. I'm honored and humbled to stand before you today and come to you with a heart full of love, urgency, and resolve. I know that at the end of these three, three short minutes, you're going to be challenged, convicted, and maybe even angry with me, but know that I'm commanded by God, your God, to love my neighbors and, and you, all our very important and integral neighbors. Therefore, these words I have for you are for your good, the good of our city and our nation. The topic I'm bringing to your attention is a subject that we're all aware of, but don't give the attention and priority that it's definitely worthy of. This is not a trivial subject. This is of grave importance and needing immediate attention from us all. This is incredibly pertinent, primarily because it's important to my God and your God. 
the God and judge of all of us who will stand before and give an account of on our day of judgment. Listen very carefully to me in these next moments. 1,200 pre-born developing human beings are systematically murdered every single month just in our state alone. That's roughly 40 defenseless humans executed every single day. Abortion is the premeditated murder of human babies with malice aforethought. The shedding of innocent blood is bringing compounded calamity upon our nation. Our Lord and God hates abortion. This is not my opinion. Listen to God's word. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Our God commands us not to murder. The killing of an innocent baby in the womb is murder in the eyes of God. And like I said, the shedding of innocent blood is bringing nothing but disastrous consequences that we've been dealing with for decades. Since Roe v. Wade, 60 million human beings have been executed, future men and future women dead. Mothers bringing these babies to an abortion clinic to pay for them to be dismembered or chemically killed is a wickedness with no parallel. This must stop now. You all play a very crucial role in the governance of our city and presently have a delegated position of authority by God. You must wake up. You must come to your senses. You must act on behalf of the most oppressed people group on this earth. Your primary duty is to protect our city's inhabitants. AZ Statute 13-3603, I would beg you to look that up, says that abortion is, in, is illegal in our state and punishable by law. With all the love and respect I can give to you, do your duty. Do your duty and uphold this law. Look what God commands you in his word. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling towards the slaughter. That's our duty. We have to act according to this most important priority now. And I want to encourage all the residents that you can get involved at endabortionnow.com and join us in this most important fight. As I said, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Now, that is a distinctly Christian approach mm -hmm. to fighting against abortion. Mm -hmm. Praise God. That is what we want you to hear. We are, of course, uh, not God. We are fallible human beings. We make mistakes. We fall short. Uh, but we know what God's standards are, and we know how people's hearts change. We know how regeneration takes place. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God. Right. It's God's word. That's how faith comes. And the Bible teaches that it is the gospel that's a power of God for salvation. If you want to see human hearts change to the degree that they no longer want to kill innocent, pre-born children, you cannot get at the human heart through humanistic principles and secular methodologies. Mm -hmm. You cannot change the human heart in terms of how it thinks about the pre-born and murdering innocent human beings. You cannot get at that human heart and transform it uh, through uh, just mere logical persuasion or trying to chunk away at abortion and make abortion maybe a little less comfortable or just sort of make it uh, not over 20 weeks, right. 19 mm -hmm. weeks. You mm -hmm. know, let's move our way down. Or, you know, abortion clinics are really, really dirty and they ought to be cleaner. Right. I, I'm sorry. That's not how you change the human heart. Um, you're not going to do it. You're not going to end abortion in a nation because you start putting legislation in that says we need cleaner abortion mills. Really? Do we think that during the time of slavery that the right thing to have done would have been to suggest that slave owners give more humane living conditions for slaves? Shouldn't it just, be, shouldn't it just have been that the kidnapping and enslaving of a human being uh, is immoral, wicked, and deserves the death penalty? which is what God's word says, mm -hmm. ought not it to be, this is an image bearer of God, don't you dare kidnap and enslave a human being. Shouldn't that just have been the standard? Isn't that what we would say it is today? Think about it today. When you think about it post-slavery, how do we think about slavery today in terms of better living conditions for slaves, making it more comfortable for them, making sure they all have a pillow and a blanket and a nice comfy cushion? Or do we think right. about it today with it all behind us and we're saying it can never happen again you cannot take an image bearer of god a human being and enslave them it is not allowed it is unjust under all circumstances isn't that how we think about it today so right. how come now that we're before abortion we're trying to chunk away at abortion in a way we would never suggest to people if we can go back in time that they should fight against the injustice of slavery 
If we're going to fight against abortion, we have to do it consistently. And as Christians and Pastor Zach Morgan yesterday before the Phoenix City Council did just that as a Christian. Yeah, I think it might be good, too, to just remind people that what we're doing and what we're trying to do in engaging the magistrates might seem unique, but it's not novel at all. No. It's not new yeah. in the course of history. Right. And in, in Christian history specifically, you have Christians who established nations that believed in the continuity of God's covenant. The, yes. the Christians that settled in the colonies and many other places were wedded to that idea that God was furthering his gospel message, and it was their responsibility to speak prophetically to the magistrates to remind them of that covenant to which they were bound. Yeah, that's, right. that's why you have the uh, call, for example, of presidents uh, back in the day to put their hand on an open Bible rather than a closed Bible to be sworn in in the book of Deuteronomy because they realize something. We're so disconnected from our long and storied history that we've forgotten these things, but they took the responsibility on themselves for their nation and they took the mantle up of prophets to remind their mm. leaders to do justice for the oppressed, to uh, uphold the cause of the widow and the orphan. And that's really the essence and the spirit of what we're trying to capture because abortion is not just a individual sin, it's a national one. When our nation codified into law child sacrifice, it went from being individual to a national sin. And what Zach is trying to articulate in that is national sin brings national calamity. It brings judgment from God because God destroys nations for practicing child sacrifice. Yeah. And if we want it in any way resemble the New Testament apostles, we're going to have to do what they did and be accused of what they were accused of in Acts chapter 5. Which is? When they went before the magistrates and they said, you killed the author of life, but God has raised him from the dead. You're the ones that shed innocent blood. Mm. And the charge against them was, you're filling Jerusalem with this teaching of the mm -hmm. resurrection, yeah. and you're trying to bring this man's blood upon us. Right. That was the charge that Christians today need to be guilty of. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the charge that we need coming down on us mm -hmm. from our magistrates. The shedding of innocent blood is condemned by God. He's going to judge the nation, any nation that practices it. You better repent in right. a hurry. Right. right. And and we, it, we would be effective... I like how you said that. We would be effective as a church if the magistrates say to us, when we're prophetic, speaking prophetically to them, you intend to bring these children's mm. blood upon us. Yes. yes. The answer is yes. Uh -huh. yep. Because it's your God-ordained duty and role to uphold justice for the pre-born for yeah. every human being, and you're not doing it. And in particular, we have in Arizona, AZ statute 13-3603. Yeah, very good. Um, <laughs> that is the statute that criminalizes abortion today in yes. Arizona. In Arizona right now, it is illegal to have an abortion. People say... Well, not really, because everyone's doing it. Right, because we have bought into the fiction that the Supreme Court creates law. It doesn't, according to our Constitution. It doesn't. The states have a right to reject the unjust opinion of the court. And the lesser magistrates have to do their duty before God and resist this tyranny from above to protect the innocents below. Mm -hmm. That's critical. So Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, we're not even the first group of people to do this in the last 30 years, right? And there's guys like rusty and you yeah. know operations of america these guys have been doing this for a we're while relatively newcomers but we have this reach right we're saying we we want to start something i mean phoenix is i just looked up phoenix is, a, is the fifth largest city in the u.s can you imagine if even the top if we had people going regularly to the top 10 cities in the u.s speaking to their city council and, and i want to read uh proverbs 29 18 which says where there is no prophetic vision that people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. Yeah. So let's, if we can get, if we can get teams regularly going to the top 10 cities, I'll tell you what they are. It's New York, LA, Chicago, Houston, then Phoenix, Philly, San Antonio, San Diego, Dallas, San Jose, Austin, Jacksonville, San Fran, Columbus, so forth and so on. Let's get teams going to these cities regularly, uh, casting this, this prophetic vision um, and, and calling our, our magistrates to repent. That's good. Yeah, yeah I like that's it. I like great that's great. Hey, do that. Hey, everyone hear that? There's 231 people watching live right now on YouTube and more than that watching on Facebook, I believe, right now. So do you hear that? Why don't we as local churches, pastors, please listen especially. It's our duty to lead our people into the fight. Uh, go to your local council, uh, your city meetings, and uh, speak prophetically to them with the word of God. Call them to repentance. Call them to uphold justice for the preborn. 
Pastor Luke is exactly right. If we can, across the United States, speak to our magistrate in that way, I believe that God can do amazing, powerful, powerful, mm. transforming things. And by the way, it's part of our tradition as Christians within the church. Uh, there's a fantastic book I have on my shelf. Actually, it's two volumes big. It's uh, political sermons uh, from the church. And what it is is essentially pastors uh, that were invited to consistently speak to the magistrates, and it's their sermons. It is epic. <laughs> epic. I, I have to be honest, reading those sermons that were preached to the magistrates on a regular basis mm. from the Christians early on in American history, you understand where the war for independence came from. You understand why those people thought that way. You understand how the magistrates are working the way that they did. It wasn't just in limbo, sort of just happening, suspended in midair. It was because the Christian ministers of the gospel were speaking the law of God to the church yep. and to the magistrates. Yep. Yep. It was going consistently. The black robes were leading the black robe regimen against England, and the black robes were speaking prophetically to the magistrates. You must obey God. And that's what needs to take place now. Let's rise up, church, and do it. Well, in the 50, five, five, I know we don't have time to get into this discussion, but 501c3 has done its job, right? Mm. So now Christians think, well, I, I'm a 501c3. I can't speak to the magistrates. It's oh, yes, you can. Mm. Oh, yes, you can. So they, they've put this, you know, this this uh, group in, in place where ultimately it just it restrains the church. Yep, and you neutralizes every, the church. You have every yeah. right to speak yeah. to the magistrates so, yeah, and, so and call them to repent. I'm, gl I'm them glad you brought God's that up. Law. I'm glad you brought that up. I, 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 I forgot about that. So 501c3, um, you don't believe the lies. You still speak to the magistrate and to these issues because God commands you to. It's part of our religion. It's part of our faith. And yes, it's a religion. Um, uh, God, it's part of our worship and our religious uh, uh, requirements before God. You uphold justice. You fight these fights. So right. if the government tells me you're not allowed to speak, I say I must obey God rather than men. But there's also another option for you. You could just set up a 508. The 508 is specifically designated to basically tell the government, go pound sand. We're going to worship God. Um, okay, it, so we're good with that, boys? Good. Yep. Yes? Okay, so let's go quickly into the state of theology. The state of theology.com. Oh um, this is upsetting, and I believe that it explains a lot of what we're talking about in terms of uh, the ineffectiveness of the church in the West today, particular in the United States. Here it is. This is from Ligonier, right, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. The state of theology. What do Americans believe about God, salvation, ethics, and the Bible? Ligonier Ministries and Lifeway Research partnered to find out these are the fundamental convictions that shape our theology. What do, the, what do Americans think about God, Jesus Christ, sin, and eternity? Uh, this is, again, evangelicals. Ready, boys? Ready. All right. So let's just go through this. You guys stop me as you please. Uh, evangelicals. Uh, here's the statement. Statement number 11. Please hear this, guys. This is so upsetting. Okay, it gets worse for me. So um, you'll you'll see. You'll see. Be before sorry, before we get started, Go ahead. can we maybe explain like who they who they asked this to? Okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you I don't ahead. actually know. So I was gonna. I was hoping one. Oh, you could... so I, it was evangelical respondents in 2018. So okay. this is current data. Yeah, very up to date. Yeah, yeah, so the, very up to date. So this is you know right where we're at right now, and this is in the United States, evangelicals. So these are people who profess to be evangelicals. Okay. Um, statement number 11, e everyone sins a little, but most people are good by nature. Um, it says that 52% of evangelicals agree that everyone sins a little, but most people are good by nature. Ugh. Wow. Good by nature. 52% percent of evangelicals agree. So over half. Um, and and the de to the degree uh, on the chart, it's uh, it's strongly agree, somewhat agree, not sure, somewhat and strongly. So, 52% of evangelicals agree. Of course, the Bible f would flatly contradict. Yeah. yeah. How important a, a, a reformed biblical understanding of man's condition. Okay, to explain that. Is. So, give, give us a minute burst on that. So if you have, if, if you take what the word of God says about the condition of man, you, you understand that man is totally unable to come to God. He's a rebel against God. Mm -hmm. He's hostile. And even his best day of righteousness is filthy rags before mm -hmm. God's sight. Right. That's what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that even the self-righteous works that we do that are supposedly good are actually just 
nonsense before a holy God. Yep. That, that we don't have anything to offer God. We come with him. We come to him absolutely empty handed. He's the holy one. And that's another thing um, within the survey that was really that they harped on was that they're from the results you can tell there's a there's a lack of the understanding of the holiness of God. Oh, yeah. So how set apart God is, how other he is, how morally blameless and pure and, and, and without sin he is. So uh, suffice it to say, a proper understanding of who God is and who we are. And the only way that we understand that is by his revelation and starting with the revelation of scripture, who he has revealed himself to be, he's holy. That is the attribute um, that it describes God more than any other attribute in scripture. Mm. God is holy. Yeah. And then moving on from there, what is our condition before God? Are we just a little bit sick? Are we by nature good people mm. deep down? Mm. Uh, right? Ephesians 2, right. by nature children of wrath. Right. And right. I think um, just uh, to tack on to that, um, I think Luke and I were talking about this a little bit earlier, how much Gnostic thought has yeah. influenced us as Christians. And even with something like this, you, the, the Gnostic view is, is separated into two stories. The, the upper story yep. is the immaterial, the value realm. Lower story is the fact realm, what's empirically verifiable. We've taken that and even applied it to this kind of a category where we say, okay, yes, the actions of the body that the person committed were bad, right? They were actions in the body. They were socially conditioned by the, the person's environment, upbringing, all these different factors. But the immaterial essence of the person, the upper story, is still good, yeah. ultimately. Mm -hmm. right. We've divided the two so that way no one's responsible ultimately for their sin before God. And so we've done complete injustice to the Word of God and Scripture and what God says about our condition before Him by adopting pagan, unbiblical mindsets yeah. about the nature of man. Andrew Sandlin was talking about that, and he called it the ghost in the machine. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. the, the driver of the car mm -hmm. that somehow your body, your true self is the immaterial essence. It's your consciousness, right? And then your body is the car, which is just an object that you use to further your own desires. It's mm. not actually intrinsic to who you are. It's extrinsic. Mm. It's just this machine that you're driving. And that, by the way, is the worldview that underlies abortion and underlies transgenderism, homosexuality. Your body is just simply this mass of tissue yep. that can be used for purposes that you deem fit to fulfill your desires of your immaterial essence. Boom. Wow. Wow. Well, we uh, might get through two of these today. That was good. Yeah, we got to go a little faster. So right. um, <laughs> now you know why. <laughs> no, but joke. I didn't want to stop you because it's well, too good. That? But uh, no, that's good stuff we, too. Yeah, we're, we're, we're short on time today. Okay. Statement number three. This was upsetting. Uh, God, yeah. again, and for those of you guys that are just joining us right now, uh, wherever you're at, on whatever streaming device or whatever's going on, uh, this is the State of Theology. Ligonier and Lifeway teamed up to interview and uh, question uh, evangelicals in 2018. Their questions related to Jesus, Scripture, the Bible, all those things. And so th these are the answers. Um, so God accepts the worship of all religions. Oh, boy. Including Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Well, I, let me just ask you. So, you, well, if you guys are live right now, how do you think evangelicals ought to respond to a question <laughs> like that? And what do you think? Isn't it obvious right now to all of us? Like, well, the answer is obvious. Jesus is the way, truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. One oh. God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. It's obvious. God accepts the worship of all religions, including Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Evangelical respondents in 2018, 51% agree yeah. versus 42% wow. disagree. There is a change, by the way, this was also asked in 2016 of evangelicals. And in 2016, it was 49% mm -hmm. agreed, 43% disagreed. So you see a 2% change there. It is going up, apparently. It might be negligible, but it's still oh, no, yeah. upsetting. Yeah. Uh, so, wow. yeah, that's that's very, very sad. It's a core part of the Christian faith and the message of Jesus. He is the only way to God. Yeah. Think about what Jesus says in John chapter 8 and compare that to what evangelicals in 2018 are saying about Jesus. Jesus says, unless you believe ego a me, you'll die in your sins. Right. Unless you believe I am. I'm God, I'm Yahweh, you're going to die in your sins. Right. American evangelicals go, ah, pish posh. Um, well, it's inclusivism is, is what it is. To sum it up in one word, inclusivism. So basically, if people mean well, 
they don't have to have the true biblical Christ. <laughs> now this one, I when I was reading through this, I looked at it and I go, I as I read it, I immediately go, I already know everyone answered in the in the positive for yeah. that because they actually got it makes so much sense. I'll just read it. Statement number 13, God counts a person as righteous, not because of one's work, but only because of one's faith in Jesus Christ. Everybody goes, oh yeah, we're saved just because of what Jesus did. Everybody loves grace. Everyone loves that grace, y'all, uh, which I do too. We do yep, too. I'm big on grace. But but what's important here is to note the, the tear away, the pull away from the Christian message in terms of our sin, our nature as sinful, everyone is truly, truly fallen and not good. And then Christ being the exclusive way, American evangelicals go, half of them go, well, no, not really. But then you go, but how are you saved? Is it through your righteousness or another foreign righteousness? And everyone goes, oh, no, that's the grace of God. I need Jesus. Why? Because they know in their heart of hearts they're not by nature good. Right, right, right. right. Good 80. Point. Good point. Oh, here you go. Finding. 91% agree, 91% agree that it is only through Jesus' righteousness and through faith in him. So I say to that, well, good, but that needs some context. Definitely. Uh, anything you guys want to say about that? No. no? Okay. It's going to get even more apparent oh, yeah, with okay. the next Here, one. Here's, here's the question. Here's, yeah, Who is here we he? Go. Yeah. <laughs> Statement number two, there is one true God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I was like, hey, all right. 97% <laughs> agree. There is one true God, three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yeah, one of them, right? 97% agree, good I'd job. say. That's pretty good. Yes, yes, evangelicals. Good, 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 good. And good. then the next one. And then. The wheels fall off. It all completely falls apart. One God, three eternal persons. And then statement number six. This was so upsetting. Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God. Now, let me ask you a question. What's that sound like? Let me ask you a question right now, watching live. Listen to what I just said. Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God the Father. How ought evangelicals to answer that, considering they just affirm the Trinity? Yeah, keep in mind that. They just affirm the Trinity. <laughs> yeah. 2018, 78% agree 78% of American evangelicals interviewed agree that Jesus is the first and greatest, be, uh, greatest being created by God. 78% of evangelicals believe that Jesus is a created being. We love Jesus and what he can do for us, but we have no idea who he is. Yeah. I like that word you just made up, though, creatist. <laughs> Did I? Yeah. I need to eat He's lunch. The first and best creatist. <laughs> Combined created and greatest. This is me having a very rough week as a pastor. <laughs> And not eating enough food. 78% um, agree that Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God. Wow. Mm. Powerful stuff here, guys. And we want to, if we want to know how um, to affect the world, to affect the culture with the gospel, it's going to start with our knowledge of the true God and the true gospel. Uh, there's not going to be any change or transformation in the world round about us if we don't have the right God and right gospel. And the fact that 78% of American evangelicals believe that Jesus was created by the Father is so upsetting. It's so upsetting. Yeah. Um, uh, U.S. adults, the holiness of God. Um, are you ready for this? Okay. Ready. Even the smallest sin deserves eternal damnation. Well, what, do you, what do you think about that? Do you agree with James in James chapter 2? Whosoever should keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. Keep the whole law, stumble in one point, guilty of the whole thing. That's what James says. Well, American evangelicals, they found that even the smallest sin deserves eternal damnation. 23% agreed. Great job, 23%. Uh, versus 69% disagree. 69% of American evangelicals do not believe that ultimately sin separates us from god again there's that the first question we read uh you know we think that we, we offer something right yeah 
that there's something good yeah, right. within us that we can produce our own righteousness. Statement number 20, worshiping alone or with one's family is a valid replacement for regularly this, attending I, church. I am so glad they asked this question. Yeah, yeah. That's where all the satellite campuses come into play. So right? glad they asked this question. 58% of American evangelicals agree in 2018 that worshiping alone or with one's family is a valid replacement for regularly attending church. So apparently they don't agree with the writer of Hebrews. It says not to forsake the gathering of yourselves together and to submit to those who are in authority over you. All those qualifications for pastors, deacons, and all that together, yeah. one another, love one another, forgive one another, all the meeting together on the first day of the week, gathering together for worship, all that just first century weirdness. Yeah. You know, we, strange. we get a lot of messages from people that are asking questions they should be asking their pastors. Um, you know, and I, and I usually, you can usually tell, you know, and I'll just, I'll try to answer questions and then I'll be like, Hey, do you have a pastor? And they're like, no. Yeah. Well, and then I'll send them a link that says, here's a church in your area you can go to. But like, that's, that's where we're at. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. And so I'm just saying this cause we're not your pastors. I'm glad to help you and, and send you links and encourage glad you. Glad to be a I blessing. Can. Yes. But I am not your pastor and I cannot, it's not possible for me to pastor you long distance. That's right. Right. So just for the record, <laughs> like a I, long can distance I, relationship. Can I suggest <laughs> this? Is there a connection between this majority of people believing that you don't need to be a part of a local church and 78% of American evangelicals thinking that Jesus was created by the Father? Is there a connection between <sighs> those two so. things? I think there's probably a connection. Or how about this one? Statement number 30. Religious belief is a matter of personal opinion. It is not about objective truth. <sighs> Upper story. Uh, religious belief is a matter of personal opinion. It's not about objective truth. This isn't really true. It's just a feeling, right? 60% of American evangelicals in 2018 agree that religious belief is a matter of personal opinion. It's not about objective truth. Um, yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful. Um, wow. The Bible's condemnation of homosexual behavior doesn't apply today. The Bible's condemnation of homosexual behavior doesn't apply today. American Evangelicals, 2018, 44% agree. Well, not as bad as some of the other ones. In the middle there. Yeah. Uh, Here we go. Abortion is a sin. 52% agree. 38% disagree. American Evangelicals, professing Evangelicals. Mm. Um, Here we go. Only those who trust in Jesus Christ alone as their Savior receive God's free gift of eternal salvation. 62% of participants age 18 to 34 agree, up from 53% in 2016. Oh, there you go. I like how there was zero no, not sures on this one. <laughs> All the others had like a bunch of not sures. Everybody was pretty. Everyone was positive on that one. Yeah, or negative, but. The Bible, like all sacred writings, we'll end on this. The Bible, like all sacred writings, contains helpful accounts of ancient myths, but it's not ne- not literally true. 53% Ugh. of participants, 18 to 34, agree. Wow. Higher than in 2016. Ugh. So over half of evangelicals believe that, like all sacred writings, the Bible contains helpful accounts of ancient myths, but it's not literally true. Ugh. And there you go, brothers so, and sisters. Someone did comment and say that the, there's Catholics included in this number because they would consider themselves evangelicals. Okay. And if you take out, you can actually pull out the Catholics and the numbers get better, but still, it's still, this is where we're at, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I know I showed this the other day, and I was like, I think this very accurately uh, displays why our culture is where it's at. Yeah. Yes. Agreed. 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 All right, guys. So let's uh, move quickly into the next little segment here. Two um, left, so. Oh, let's let's just go kind of fast. All right. So last week, if you guys watched the show last week, we did a little bit of a response to some gentlemen um, uh, who, uh, well. They did a they did a, um, a program uh, a little uh, show about uh, us. Um, it, it's, it was apparent in in watching some of the comments that they made that they weren't very clear about who we are, what we believe, and they did a follow up video after our discussion last week. And um, honestly, because we're so busy with pastoral duties and speaking to the local uh, city council and some other things, um, we haven't got a chance to listen to the entire hour long uh, video. I've only made it about 20 minutes in and uh, it was a difficult 20 minutes. Um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that. And just because it just is clear that um, I think maybe on the one gentleman, Caleb, uh, Caleb, I think Caleb is, is, it seems like he's more committed to trying to understand uh, perspective than the other uh, gentleman. Yeah, I, I don't, 
I don't I don't it doesn't seem that he's really even even concerned himself with yeah. trying to understand really our position at all, which um, is, you know, disheartening. So from our perspective, what we wanted to do last week is just respond a bit. I made comments last week that um, we don't uh, fully understand their perspective. And um, we made comments related to comments that they made in the video. We, I even said several times, I don't want to make too many assumptions. Um, and so what we said was, if they believe such and such, then this is what we would say in response to it. Um, but uh, I just wanted, at least for today's show, we're running out of time here, uh, play some of their response just to give you somewhat of, a, of somewhat of an idea of what we're dealing with when communicating with these two gentlemen. Um, as they started off their show in response to our show, um, well, I'll just play it. This was uh, one of the first comments uh, that were made. Jeff Durbin, he's a very accomplished martial artist. He, I think he has uh, five, five black belts. And, five uh, black belts. Wow, that's, that's impre- yeah. that takes a lot of dedication. Oh, man. And he was, uh, uh, he was like a champion, and, and uh, I watched some videos of him fighting, and uh, I would never want to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> with this that's for sure uh he's he's uh he, very impressive um and w- one of the things that the guys here in the office said is that he's noticed that that uh, people who who uh are well versed in martial arts tend to really enjoy the uh the fight of it maybe not fight maybe that's that but you know oh the spar the spar like right the, yeah, exactly yeah. That's, that's and so fine. it's inter- it's it's interesting to see um it's interesting to see durbin you know kind of tra- try to respond to this now I, I just i just want to say briefly and i'm not i'm not going to uh give a lot of credence to what they're they're saying here i just want to say um just just the suggestion uh, there uh it's just it just bothers me because you obviously don't know me um that my being a martial artist somehow plays into my loving to fight theological battles yeah I can assure you that my desire to fight these theological battles is a love for God and love for my neighbor and is not connected to my five black belts or my being a world champion or anything like that at all. It's not for the sport of it. Our doing these videos, this ministry itself, let me just say, is not for the sport of it. Um, so it's a bit you know, disheartening to hear you guys suggest such a thing. Um, and I was, I'll say, too, the only reason we're even having this discussion is because they initiated right. a video you know, mischaracterizing us. Right. So uh, continuing on. Um, even though I think that, well, yeah. Okay. I wonder. I wonder if he spent more time m- with martial arts study and practice than in the Word of God. Uh, oh. I don't know. oh. Well, you know, I mean, we call that here at Apologia Radio a Jesus juke. Um, so th- this gives everyone just a bit of an idea of what we're dealing with with these two gentlemen. Um, uh, starting the, off the programming, talking about, you know, you know, we talk about how, you know, he's a martial artist and, uh, you know, they really love to spar. Martial artists love to spar. And then, of course, the really, really low blow and just jab. Um, I wonder if he spent more time practicing martial arts than reading his Bible. Um, I, I just, you know, it's not something I would want to do. Uh, I'll just give you my commitment mm-hmm. on that. It's not something that I would want to do to to just deliver a low blow and a jab like that. If I'm going to uh, say something confrontational and very straightforward to you, it's going to be based off of your theological beliefs right. and system. I'm mm-hmm. going to address your system. I'm not going to say, uh, hey, you know, this gentleman, let's say he likes to ride bikes. I'm not going to find out he likes to ride bikes and go, I'm wondering if he's reading his Bible more than he's riding his bicycle. You know, that's, yeah. it's just an unnecessary jab. That's called ad hominem. Yeah. And it just doesn't, it doesn't further the discussion. Yeah. And honestly, I have no respect for yeah. that kind of communication. He's, he's certainly a brother in the Lord. I don't want to put him down. And actually that's, that was, I think one of the mo- most disappointing things of the end. Inter- Thank you, Caleb. Next, um, uh, let's play this portion so you guys can get a little bit of a handle on what we're dealing with here. This was, again, this is uh, maybe first 20 minutes of the show this is about 10 minutes in and this was very very hard to hear but like not even trying to interact with that kind of uh, realm of scholarship and hmm. I, i'm not i've i've watched more of their videos to try to understand exactly where they're coming from in terms of their thank you caleb thank view you caleb. Of end, end times it seems to me and i you know this could be they might balk at this and so um you know but from what I've understand, it almost feels like they're like a, uh, they got like a post millennial um, 
post millennial. Well, maybe are th- I, are they? So pa- pa- pause yes. there, Caleb. Thank you. And let me just say, it shouldn't have been. Uh, let me just put all the cards on the table. It shouldn't have even been sort of like foggy or yeah. hazy. Yeah. Um, we are hardcore pipe hitting post millennialist Calvinists, and. Uh, and that's obvious to everybody. I mean, hundreds of hours of content, videos, preaching across around the world on this subject. We get criticized for talking about it too much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's not kind of like we're post-millennialists. We are uh, in the Puritan tradition, and uh, like uh, virtually everybody on this continent, uh, early on in America, we are post-millennialists. Um, our patron saint... Um, uh, Athanasius, uh, <laughs> it, he's, yes, uh, we are hardcore, um, unashamed uh, post-millennialist, absolutely, without question. Um, so, Caleb, thank you for taking note of that. Uh, but this was interesting. Listen to the yeah. definition. Yeah. You know, with the Dominion theologians, like the idea, and I, again, you know, like, uh, was it Gary North and Rush Dooney? The idea that, um, got the at least the way right. I understand it, is that um wealthy christians uh should expand their their capital right expand their their right. material possessions because this Ooh. is in fact foundational to god's kingdom in the world that might be the worst definition That's, of I, 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 I want to say i want to say this with as much gentleness and respect to you as i possibly can that was one of the most embarrassing embarrassing answers i have honestly ever heard of somebody trying to describe post post millennialism it almost seems like you have never ever studied this never done your homework on it and you're trying to speak publicly on it so i just want to say um and i mean this as with as much gentleness as possible that is an embarrassingly bad answer um caleb Good on you. Trying to figure it out. Yes, or post millennialists, uh, but uh, this gentleman here uh, next to you trying to explain post millennialism. Um, I mean, he even mentioned North and Rush Dooney, so he knows right, he yeah. knows their names. Right. Uh, those, of course, are men who, yeah, they're post millennialists. Um, we don't necessarily agree with North and Rush yeah. Dooney on everything, um, but I know for sure that North and Rush Dooney would never define post millennialism yeah. like you just said. They would repudiate uh, that. Neither yeah. would the Puritans Absolutely. or anybody in church history who was post millennial or has been post millennial. Uh, I'm just I just want to say this with respect to you. That was an embarrassingly bad answer. Um, I, yeah. I, I just can't imagine um, yeah. doing that in terms of trying to define a position and say, you know, this is, you know, what they believe. Wealthy Christians expanding yeah. their material possessions. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll say, Caleb, if you watch this, like, I had a very hard time. I got 23 minutes in. I had a very hard time watching anymore after this point. When I got to that, I just, it was, I cringed. I was like, come on. Like, you, you asked us. When we said, please do your homework, this is exactly what we mean. No homework was done. A completely ridiculous uh, explanation was thrown out for something. And it's not even not even in the same universe. And, you know, and it just it just makes it makes it hard for you to be credible. It makes it hard to take you guys seriously when this is, you know, well, I th- the kind I'm of glad you said it. Especially, I-, I think your 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 friend and I can't remember his name and I apologize. I think he he even made a jab somewhere in there about being scholastic and like this is the farthest thing from that go ahead yeah no that's i think that's the point is is it's an issue of credibility we made a comment last week when we responded to a short bit of your video that we not we're not going to make too many assumptions on your beliefs we said this is we uh, defined our terms this is what we believe here's what we believe and we said that if somebody is teaching a b or c then this is what we would say in response to that but not making too many assumptions on your belief we played through some of your comments and directly responded to your comments themselves in terms of your own definitions and those sorts of things. So that's what we're trying to do. We admit that we don't know everything about you guys, um, and we've tried to keep our comments to a minimum in terms of if somebody is teaching this, this is how we would respond. Yeah. But what is just so difficult to, to take in and listening to this, and I haven't got through the whole thing yet, and I think Luke's exactly right, it really does speak to your credibility 
in terms of when you make comments like this or you make jabs at me in terms of I wonder if he's pra- read the Bible as much as he's practiced martial arts and you define postmillennialism as, as, as wealthy Christians expanding their capital and their wealth uh, to expand dominion or whatever else you said, it just goes toward your credibility. And for someone who prides themselves on you know, being a scholastic, and, and I'm sure you know you do you know a lot in terms of the Greek language, all those things. I would just call you to just just do better, do better in the future in terms of response. Um, so that's it. We wanted to give you guys just a bit of an intro. I have been so busy this last week, haven't got a chance to review this whole thing. I will be happy to respond to much of what is said in here, and I'm gonna. Um, but uh, I just wanted to play through at least some of that so you guys can just get a handle on uh, what they said. So that is, um, uh, that's it for, and you guys have anything else you want to bring up? What did we talk about? We did talk about uh, Australia mm-hmm. and New Zealand. Yes, yes, yes. Um, anything else we need to announce? I don't think so. So? No. We're good. All right. I'm just oh. loving this music. No, today. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> I really do. Uh, <laughs> so October 31st, October 31st, Reformation Day. 34th. Yeah. Um, we are dropping a new program dro- brought to you guys by the creators of Apologia Studios. It is a new program. It is called Cultish. Uh, Jeremiah Roberts and myself are doing this program. We're dropping the first four episodes Uh, They'll be available for you guys through all your devices and all your platforms. Um, You're going to be seeing at Apologia Studios on Facebook and on YouTube some advertisements for those first episodes. We're going to introduce you to Apollo Quibaloy. He is the Filipino son of God. He calls himself the Messiah, the son of God on earth today. We're going to introduce you to Jim Jones, the Marxist, socialist, atheist preacher who led over 900 people to their deaths in Guyana. Uh, South America. We're going to introduce you to the Jesus of the cults. We're going to introduce you to our friend Andrea Schwartz, who was a Scientologist. And Scientology, when she left with her husband and came to Christ, put a uh, hit out on her and her husband, uh, tried to kill her and her husband. Amazing interview. They're all going to drop at the same time. Cultish, right here at apologiastudios.com forward slash cultish. You'll be able to get it October 31st. Thank you all for listening. Make sure you guys go sign up for all access at apologiastudios.com. When you guys do sign up for all access, you partner with us in this ministry to communicate the gospel around the world. And uh, you're an integral part of all that we do. And so all access, you're going to partner with us and you're going to get every TV show, every after show, every Apologia Academy, access to all of our content. And again, you'll be a major part of what God is doing at Apologia Church to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth and provide a defense for the biblical gospel. Luke the Bear. Peace out. Zach Attack. See you guys. I'm Jeff. They call me the Ninja. And we'll catch you next time right here on Apologia Radio.